So here's a really radical idea, Madam President. Maybe at a time when the scientists tell us that it is questionable in terms of the kind of planet we're going to leave our kids and future generations, whether or not it is going to be habitable or livable. I know it's a radical idea. A lot of fossil fuel money coming into this place. But maybe, just maybe, we stand up to the fossil fuel industry and tell them their short-term profits are not more important than the future of this planet. So, Madam President, uh, we have a lot of work to do. I'm not sure that we will do it. I'm not sure that members of Congress have the willingness or the courage to stand up to the powerful special interests who control the economic and political life of this country. You know, like OG Bernie Sanders said, it's really a radical idea to take care of people. It's really a stretch of the imagination to think that the wealthiest nation in the history of civilization could, you know, afford to take care of its citizens a little better, could squeeze money out of corporations to make sure that, you know, month to month we aren't borrowing money off of our credit cards or from friends. We already know the trillions of dollars in credit card debt, the trillions of dollars in student loan debt, the trillions of dollars in corporate debt. Corporations can't even get their acts together. And because corporations cannot get their acts together, why are we continuously doing them so many favors? Why do we continue to bail them out when they're the ones who are always preaching about responsibility? And you got to work your way up to the top. But the people at the top have no responsibility because every single time they mess up things, not just for themselves, but for the rest of the world. Guess who gets bailed out? With the $182 billion bailout of AIG in 2008, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury put U.S. taxpayers on the line for the full cost and risk of rescuing a failing company and protecting a small but influential group of companies that were exposed to it. $7.6 billion worth of bailout loans. Every single year, we see the effects of climate change and how it makes life harder for people all over the world. People who live in coastal cities, even yeah, I live up here in New York, you know, and I moved here after Hurricane Sandy. But the flooding that happened last year, every single year hurricanes get worse. Every single year it gets hotter and hotter. There's certain areas in the world where people aren't going to be able to survive. And that means that wars are going to be fought over things like water. So, yes, it's really a radical idea that maybe we should do something about that before it's too late, before the first shot gets fired over who can have water and who can't. I know these are things that are just so crazy and radical to think about. As we talk about the irony of America's attitude that we're just number one and we're going to stay that way is that much of the rest of the world has passed us up in many measures. Our healthcare system is not world class. Sure, we have great health care. We have great health care technology. But if you can't afford it, you don't get it. You know, sure, we have a lot of money made, but mostly the people in the 0.1 percent are the people who touch it. You see these other economies and these other societies at one point, because they're much older than America, were world leaders. After World War II, that came to an end. But since then, they've caught up. But America's attitude hasn't adjusted. And if it doesn't, we're going to continue to see the gap between the wealthy and the poor continue to spread. We're going to continue to see the rest of the world pass us up in ways and we're just going to fall behind. So, you know, Bernie Sanders, he's definitely one of the people who got me most inspired to get involved in politics. And so it's always great to see him take it to the floor and stick it to the man like he does routinely.